This morning we lost one of the most beloved actors, one of the most beloved characters in television history. Leonard Nimoy passed away of end-stage chronic obstructive pulmonary disease at the age of 83. Now, most likely those of you who know him know him as Mr. Spock from the original Star Trek, from the movies that followed it, multiple other series that he guest starred on. Uh, but he was also an accomplished uh, playwright, poet, musician, director, uh, including of some projects that you might not be familiar with. So we're going to quickly walk you through a few of the highlights of this great actor's career, uh, and then we're going to share our own you know, sort of thoughts about the passing of this icon. From the age of eight, Leonard acted in local productions, winning parts at a community college where he performed through his high school years. In 1949, after taking a summer course at Boston College, he traveled to Hollywood, though it wasn't until 1951 that he landed small parts in two movies, Queen for a Day and Rhubarb. His first starring movie role came in 1952 with Kid Monk Baroni, in which he played a disfigured Italian street gang leader who becomes a boxer. Uh, I did not know this, but in addition, Mr. Nimoy served in the Army for two years, rising to sergeant and spending 18 months at Fort McPherson in Georgia, where he presided over shows for the Army's Special Services Branch. But then, of course, he achieved uh, wide visibility in the late 1950s and early 1960s, first on television shows like Wagon Train, Rawhide, and Perry Mason. But then he was cast, of course, most importantly, as uh, Mr. Spock, the science advisor and friend and confidant of Captain Kirk on the original Star Trek. Um, and although he had a number of other roles after that point, again, both on and off screen, in front of and behind the camera, um, I think for most people that is the role that he became most beloved for. Uh, it was at times a contentious, I, I guess, thing to be stuck with for him. I mean, he famously wrote, I am not Spock, and then I am Spock. So at the end, at least, he seemed to have, uh, have liked the fact that if you're going to be typecast to something, there are worse things than Mr. Spock. You know, I like that you called him the science advisor. Is that what he technically He's a science, was, science, chief science, science officer? Science advisor. He was like the Neil deGrasse Tyson, basically, exactly. of the uh, of the Enterprise. Yeah. Little known fact about uh, Nimoy is that he played the voice of Galvatron in mm -hmm. the nineteen eighty six Transformers movie, really? and then he played the voice of Sentinel Prime in the two thousand eleven Transformers movie. Huh. Wow, wow. That's a promotion. Yeah, I do remember that. That's right. Nineteen eighty six one, by the way, was Orson Welles' last role. Wow, wow, you are so I know that. I good night, everybody. We, I'm bringing it for this. I'm bringing facts. And it's my last payday. They just let you walk out the door. <laughs> <laughs> that is amazing. Now, I love him as Spock, and everybody mm -hmm. talks about that role, but I think he, it gets, he gets overlooked for his work on Law & Order, which I thought he was fantastic on Law & Order. Oh, was that a different guy? Richard that was Belzer. Belzer. That's Richard Belzer. <laughs> but anyway, they were still Law both very good. Well, uh, all yeah. that aside, though, he did have a huge cultural impact. I mean, mm -hmm. he was part of one of the biggest, most, I think, culturally influential TV shows in TV history. So, you know, maybe I'm a little overdone on that, but I also happen yeah. to be a Star Trek fan. Mm -hmm. So I followed it since I was a little kid when it came on after school. I don't know how many of you got to see it after school, but I got to see every single episode many times over. So uh -huh. I loved it. I thought it was uh, an amazing uh, TV show, and I think he did a, a great job. And I'm glad that he was able to come to peace with the character that sort of took over his life. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, while I, I was a huge a Star Trek fan growing up, not really of the original series, actually. I was a fan of the others, but those would not have existed, or they would not have been what they were exactly. if not for characters like like Spock. Like Star Trek, one of the most important sort of parts of it, and why I think it's so important in, in the history of television, is it's not just a space adventure. It's about social issues. It's about people. And his initial sort of struggles with, with combining the fact that he's both a Vulcan and a human, what is humanity, what does it mean to be split between these different groups, to be an outsider, the only alien in an all-human crew. I mean, these are sort of ridiculous terms to use, but it set the stage for literally decades of Star Trek dealing with some of the most contentious social issues, everything from interracial marriage, transgenderism, women in the military, almost any issue you can think of was eventually dealt with on that show. And partly, I think, it's because of the initial performances of, of people like Leonard Nimoy. It was an incredibly important show historically for television, the, one of the first big, successful niche television programs. Um, and I think the TV is what it is, in large part because of these types of performances. By the way, more knowledge for you. Did you guys know, do you know where this thing came from? <laughs> do, do you know where it came I from? Do, I yeah, do. I read today. That he, <laughs> yeah. well, Jimmy, do you know where it came from? Because I'm- Family show, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> it's the shocker. It's the shocker. Um, so I guess we, in an episode of Star Trek, they sent him down to Vulcan to meet his Vulcan family members, and they were going to have him shake their hands, but then he was like, well, that's not something that they would do. They're from mm -hmm. another that's planet. That's too human. Went like this, and it stuck, and, uh, and there you go. And yeah. what it was based on was, was he said, it yeah. was based on, I guess, a, it's, a, a, it's a Hebrew 
and I don't know the name of it, but Maybe it's actually, it's the, is it this one? That that's a, it's a, it's a oh, specific it's not thing from exact one? He, No, 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 it's not that. He just adapted that so oh. that he could, it's a... I, the character that's in the Kohanic first letter is the, the name, name of God. it, but it's a greeting, yes, yeah. exactly. No, he exactly. Was, no, he was not a real scientist. <laughs> no, he was not. Well, that was one of the things just that I read actor. about, uh, was that, no. you know, he... In in trying to deal with the way that the character sort of took over his life, and you know he had people coming. He said, you know, I actually he said that he went to Caltech, which is you know California Polytechnic University here, where they do a lot of sciencey stuff, mm -hmm. and that he said all of these PhD grad students were talking to him and, and you know talking to him and saying, oh, okay, so my research is this, and and I'm going to do this, and and it's uh, this. And he said, I have no idea what they're talking about, and they're going to do this and that, and so what do you think? And he said. I had no idea what they were saying. They totally lost me at the get-go, but all I would say is, I think you're going in the right direction. Isn't that yeah. funny? People always call actors geniuses, and it's like, you know what? They're not actually doing. They're yeah. not really nuclear scientists. They're just <laughs> pretending to be nuclear scientists. or whatever. They don't yeah. really yeah. do that kind but of thing. But he's yeah. traveled all over the galaxy. I mean, that's got to count <laughs> for something. Jerry, Jerry Seinfeld's not really a comedian. <laughs> that, dear, well played, That's well awesome. played. Uh, yeah, and so I also saw that, um, I mean, obviously anytime a major celebrity like this dies, you know, people are going to post their sort of condolences and their thoughts and everything. He's survived by a quite extensive family. I saw even President Obama put out a statement about how the sort of cold, emotional, but rational, logical character was very appealing to him growing up. Many have said that he sort of has elements huh. of that in his own personality. Ah. And, and it was very similar for me. I mean, I, I, I sort of find that very appealing, the idea of, of caring about actual results, not allowing yourself to be sort of sidetracked by irrational emotions and things like that. I mean, no human can be exactly like that. But he even said later in his life that he started to recognize those characteristics in himself. And from everything that I've read about the people who've worked with him and have known him in both his, his professional life and in his personal life, in teaching and his poetry and his music, he is, he's shown himself to be an incredibly kind, uh, warm, very human man, ironically, considering he's half Vulcan. And uh, it's sad that he's passed. The world could use more people like Mr. Spock and like Leonard Nimoy.